A sure sign that spring is here. Visitors from around the Midwest made their way to Oshkosh for the WPS Farm Show. I had the chance to take in the 500 exhibitors and meet many local farmers. Attendees had one thing on their mind, saving money. How can we help you uh, improve your bottom lines, your returns per acre? Some of that is cost saving. A tool like this cross lot will uh, take out fuel because it's a true one pass uh, system where you put your seed, fertilize it down in one go. Uh, so you're going to save labor as well. Products relying increasingly on technology to save time and money. Precision planting and robotic help in the barn, both big draws at the show. A feed pusher will push up feed without any action from a tractor or a, a person, and it'll automatically do it every two hours, four hours, whatever you want it to do. And it's every time that feed pusher pushes up feed, those cows want to come up and eat. So it's hopefully higher milk production. Technology is always continuing to become more cost effective as we see that. No different with our cell phones or TVs and stuff we use for everyday um, activities. It's the same in the farm industry. The technology is becoming more cost effective and a lot of it is putting the cost per acre. Secretary designee of the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection, Brad Paff, was making the rounds to hear stories and concerns from farmers. One out of every nine jobs in this state is tied in one way, shape, or form to agriculture. We in Wisconsin are well positioned for the future. Our agriculture industry is advanced. Uh, we recognize two new technologies. We recognize the changing consumer demands. Um, we are entrepreneurial. Uh, we're ready to step forward. And so we're waiting for the market to, uh, to respond to that, the price. But um, I ask uh, people to recognize the fact that this is the best place in the world in order to uh, farm right here in Wisconsin. Wisconsin is known as the dairy state, but in 2018, it also led the nation in farm bankruptcies. A new report shows Wisconsin had nearly 50 cases of farmers filing Chapter 12 bankruptcy between June of 2017 and June of 18. Seven other large farms filed under another chapter. Bankruptcy filings from Wisconsin farms have doubled since 2014. Nearly 700 other dairy farms chose to end their operations last year. And with farmers in an extended price downturn, each new year brings with it financial pressures. A former president of the American Egg Bankers Association spoke with Mike Austin at a recent conference and shared his insights in working with your lender. It's about sharpening the pencil, looking at expenses, starting with the largest ones first and working your way down and trying to find pennies because those pennies add up to dollars and the dollars add up to the bottom line. Third, it's looking at the balance sheet. Are there some underutilized or unused assets that maybe it's time to part with? If it's collecting dust or rust, maybe it's time for it to go. And what do you do with that? You replenish working capital, you pay down debt, you lower your cost of production. Miller says he's encouraged by some of the latest risk management tools available to dairy farmers, including the revised MPP, now called the Dairy Margin Coverage Program. It's a very reasonable cost, and you can get a margin of $9.50 per hundred weight coverage versus $8 under the old, older program. So that additional $1.50 in margin coverage is at a cheaper price than the old $8 coverage was. So that's, that's it, number one. The challenge with that is it's up to the first 5 million pounds of production. Fortunately, producers can split their coverage, and we're suggesting they maximize their coverage up to the 5 million pounds and then take a different strategy above that. The Dairy Revenue Protection Program, Dairy RP, is an insurance like, it's crop insurance like program. Uh, so it's similar in that it looks also at margin. But the producers can pick their margin. They can pick the uh, class three or class four price. They can pick the components that they have. They can pick the cost structure that they have. So it's more complicated, but it can be more tailored to that individual producer. When we've had producers looking at that program, it makes much more sense in the second half of the year because milk prices are higher than they are in the first half of the year. So. Uh, they are different programs. Dairy margin coverage, as soon as you can get signed up, get signed up. Dairy RP, be looking at it and be ready to act. 
And speaking of programs, brand new numbers from January triggered the first payment for eligible dairy producers who purchased the appropriate level of coverage in the Dairy Margin Coverage Program. If you're interested, registration for that program will be open by mid June of this year. And the USDA now says that dairy producers who elected to participate in the livestock gross margin for dairy cattle program also may participate in the margin protection program for dairy for 2018 coverage. That's a big change. Signups will now take place through May 10th. The old farm bill prevented producers from doing both. FSA plans to notify eligible producers by postcard. 16% of dairy production is now exported, and Wisconsin is becoming more aggressive in growing its share of that market. U.S. DEC found um, international buyers of cheese and dairy that were, that were amenable to looking at U.S. cheese and dairy products. DATCAP actually flew them in, and once they got on the ground, it was up to the dairy farmers of Wisconsin to, to consummate the sale. So we worked with these folks for a full week, got them out to cheese companies, out to butter places, out to milk, um, dairy, everything across the board. Um, and normally these, pro these programs take y a year before you really show any, any, any sales. Uh, we actually locked in over a million dollars in sales in the first month. And now we're down, we're down the road and we're in the throes of a 10 to 15 million dollar um, deal. Vincent says one of the best aspects of the trend is the type of dairy products that are now in high demand. And the, the really interesting thing and the great thing about this is that we're starting to focus on more value-added products. So it's more cheese and the higher-end products, the higher-value products as opposed to the whey. And so that mix is starting to improve as well. Domestically, Vincent says it's important to continue to grow dairy sales in both retail and food service. Quick service food places are, are really increasing because, you know, people aren't cooking at home as much. But then you're also seeing the trends in the grocery stores where the prepared meals, people are going to the grocery store and bringing the meals home. And he also says by using producer checkoff dollars in partnerships in areas like pizza, they've really grown dairy product sales. Our partnerships with Pizza Hut and Domino's and, and the big pizza guys, you know, our partnerships with them have, have moved over a billion pounds extra in the last few years.